Hello and welcome to the Stamp Camp. I'm Glenda Calkins, your independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And tonight I have a quick tip for you regarding framelits or dies, how to get even placement every time. Let me make sure that we are good to go. And then we'll get started. Yes, it looks like I am good. Hi, Judy. Thanks for joining me tonight. So again, I have a very quick and easy tip that I'm going to show you using framelits or dies to get perfect placement. And I'm going to change the camera so that you can see. These were the cards that I had on my blog today. This one I had on Monday for Veterans Day. And I'm just going to show you the tip for getting that lined up on those strips every time. It's a very quick and easy tip. Um, but I think you might think, oh, that was a pretty nice tip. So let's get started on that. All right, so to do the strips, and so that it's all the same, you need your strips all to be the same. So you're going to actually cut four strips. You're going to cut three in whatever color cardstock that you want. Um, I'm going to recreate the leaf one just because we are here in the supposedly fall, even though we have snow here in Michigan. Um, so we're going to create this card. So I did the cherry cobbler, crushed curry, and the pumpkin pie. And then I used the leaf die from the gather together bundle. This is the die. This is a die because it's solid, and this is a framelit because it's a frame. So this technique would work with either one of these. I'm going to just use the leaf. So like I said, you're going to cut three pieces of cardstock, and they are going to be one and a half by three inches. Now, depending on um, how big your die is, you might need to go bigger or smaller, but I thought that was a pretty nice size for the card front. So I have the cherry cobbler and the crushed curry and the pumpkin pie. Again, that's one and a half by three. And then I also have a piece of Whisper White. Now this is the thick card stack. This is going to be my template. So if you want like the hearts, they're the same, they're centered. Take your template which is one and a half by three, and you're going to draw a line down the center, which is three-fourths of an inch. And then I lined up my heart so that it was even. And you can do that with um, any of your shapes. I did it with the stars as well. I drew a straight line, and then I did the top point was down the center of the line. Now to do my leaves on this card, I actually had three different templates. But tonight I'm just going to do the one template just so you get the idea. So the Whisper White is your template. So you're going to place your leaf or die or framelit, however you want it to be, on the template. So whatever, wherever you want to position it, I just liked it towards the bottom, but you could do it towards the top, in the middle. I just kind of did it to the bottom just like that. And I'm going to bring in my Big Shot. So any die cut machine that you have, I'm going to line this up again. And if you want to, you can take a piece of washi tape to stick that down so it doesn't move. And you're going to reel that through. Okay, so I just created my template. Take that off. There we go. Save your leaf. Use it for something. So then you're going to take the template and your card stack and you're going to match it up exactly. And then you're going to put your leaf back in that little spot where you just cut it out from. It should fall right back into place. And you're going to cut that out. So 
So there's the cherry cobbler. You're going to do that with each one. You're going to match up your template to your cardstock piece. And I probably, no, nope, it's, it's good. So just leave that right in the little slot where it was cut out of. And you're going to do that with each piece. So each piece is going to be identical. So your placement is going to be perfect every time. There's my cherry cobbler, or crushed curry, and one more pumpkin pie. Line that up, flush on all sides. How slick and easy is that? You can malt, you, I mean, you can do a bunch of cards this way, and every time it's gonna be in the same spot. They're all gonna be identical. This time my leaf stayed in. So isn't that cool? What I do is stick my template in with my dies so that I always have it in there. If I decide I want to have that template, I can use the template and die cut anywhere I want. It kind of helps to hold the die in there so it doesn't move or wiggle around. So that's kind of cool. So the base of my card is the crumb cake. Fold that in half. I'm going to stamp my sentiment first. And this is from the, I just stuck with the Gather Together bundle. Put that leaf back in there. So that was what part of the frames and framelits and then the stamps that I used the Season of Thanks sentiment. And I just went with the cherry cobbler. So I'm going to center that, stamp that towards the bottom, just like that. And then what you might want to do, just because your sentiment might be bigger than what you like, I can show you on my happy valentine's day it was a lot wider so my strips had to go flush to the top where on the other ones i had it down a little bit like an eighth of an inch so this one's pretty good it's close to the bottom so i can bring my strips down from the top so basically this is it you're going to just take the dimensionals i take the little teeny ones and put them in the corners here and then come up so quick and easy that's what I like great way to use those framelits get them all the same Maybe you're thinking a little overkill on the dimensionals, but I like to keep everything even. So I think by placing them in the corners and the side, it keeps it all nice and even. If you struggle getting those papers off, you can use your U-Pick tool. those off So you can do this, you could probably do the same technique with a punch if you use the template method. I haven't tried a punch, I've always done it with a framelit or a die. 
But if you have all the different framelits, you can do them for multiple occasions. So I'm going to just come down. I'm going to come in from this side and about an eighth inch from the top. Try to get that all lined up. And I always do the outside edges first and then do the center last. That way I can, oh, I put that one upside down, but, hmm, maybe I don't want it up, but I thought it kind of looked kind of cool upside down. Another option. All right, and then the center I do last because then I can kind of gauge that. Then to finish it off, I thought it just needed a little bling, you know, me and my bling. Um... I have the holiday rhinestones here. I'm gonna just put a little bling in each little. And then for the crushed curry, I used um, regular ones and then colored them with the dark mango blend. Cute. And then I forgot to cut it inside, so I'm going to quickly cut an inside, and that is four by five and a quarter. So I'll cut that. Perfect. Oh. Run away from me. Then I'll take our my leftover leaves that I die cut out, put a little adhesive on the back, and place them inside however you want. If you don't want all three or you can have all three whatever you like but I thought that was very pretty and it's a good way to use up those framelits that we die cut out there you have it isn't that sweet so this one I did in every in different directions. This one they're all the same, just like the hearts and just like the stars in that one there. Very quick and easy project and a little tip on how to get those lined up. I hope you enjoyed my tip for tonight and I want to thank you for stopping by. Share if you learned a tip or two or if you thought that was a good tip, make sure that you share, like, and comment. And if you would like the PDF file, it is in the subscriber only album on my blog, which is www.thestampcamp.com. That's it for today. Thanks for stopping by.